Thank you. Head of the Department, Professor Shija, Dean Professor Manju, Guest of Honor, Professor Ram Kumar and Shri Krishna Kumar. Uh, it's my privilege and honor to be here for this event of you know Ramachandran Sir Memorial Lecture. I happily accepted the invitation to deliver a few words uh, about Professor Ramachandran Nair before Ram's lecture. Uh, when I think about Professor Ramachandran Nair, the first thing that's coming to me is how he was a pioneer in restructuring the course and to introduce an analytical economics course in Kerala University. That was his vision and we benefited a lot from that, uh, you know, uh, analytical economics course and we were the second batch of analytical economics course in Karyavatam. And as a part of analytical economics, two things, the major difference of the analytical economics when we compare to the prior syllabus, the major difference was that he introduced two innovative components into the MA course. One is to write a dissertation, an empirical or a theoretical piece of economics or economic paper as a part of analytical economics and the other was he introduced an Indian economy course as a part of the analytical economics and in addition to the theories we learn this helped us to mold ourselves to the contemporary economics debate because that time India was you know after uh, India was undergoing the liberalization process and that new openness and the globalization process and the new debates and we were well versed with those debates and it was a part of our curriculum to be updated to the contemporary debates so as a professor who contributed to the uh, you know the curriculum structure of our department or of a university you know this is the first thing that's coming to my mind the his contribution to introduce a new course on analytical economics now when i think about him as a human being you know many professors we met in our life many professors taught us but the professors uh, who get a special place in our heart is uh, you know the a professor who is intelligent and kind so, you know, when I think about Professor Ramachandran, sir, you know, he was a kind man. Uh, he was, of course, an intellectual, but more than that, there is nothing about kindness. He was a kind man. He was very kind to his students. He supported us in coming up in life. So that kindness, you know, I need to narrate an incident about him, how I met him first time. You know, I joined the department. Uh, you know, our seniors, uh, they were very strict. There was uh, some sort of ragging that was there in the department that time. Uh, so seniors asked us not to walk in the corridor in front of the, uh, you know, the conference hall. Uh, so you, we cannot walk through that corridor. And there were a lot of restrictions uh, which was there for the juniors, for the freshers, uh, for a week's time. So what happened was that, uh, you know, my senior, he stood at the very end of the, uh, you know, that corridor and asked me to come over as if he was hit by a mystery of the universe and he needed my help to solve it. So I immediately responded and walked through the corridor and reached him. But that was a trap. It was a sweet uh, kind of thing. And he asked me, so you are disobedient. Who is your dad? Where is he? Uh, where is he working? Then uh, I was very arrogant because he asked me to come over through that corridor and I responded. And then immediately my senior, he's a very sweet person, Lilas. He's a very sweet person. But that time, you know, we freshers, we didn't understand the kind of the dynamics the seniors were imposing on us. So I was thinking that we have equal right to be here. We are freshers. Why these lot of restrictions? And, you know, I told him, I don't know. Uh, he asked, where is your dad? What is he doing? I don't know. So he was like very rough with me. Okay, then uh, like that movie, a uh, hero, if I ask you to bring your dad, like Surya Putri, you need to bring your dad. So he was taking references to the contemporary movies. And he told me that I am disobedient. Then the other seniors came in and told that we asked you not to walk through this corridor. And this is not just done. And they took the matter to the head of the department, Professor Ramachandran Nair, sir. 
So then seniors came and told me, Lekha, uh, head of the department wants to meet you. So I entered Professor Ramachandran Nair's room. Uh, so in my mind, I was thinking that, you know, I have every right to uh, be there in this department, just like my seniors. And he asked me to come over to the other end of the corridor uh, to solve his mysteries, I thought. But then he told that, oh, you are disobedient. So it, it's a kind of a playful moment. But at the end of the day, uh, I was asked to be there in front of head of the department. So I was mixed up. Then I opened the door and entered. And he was a very calm man with a smile. A very Shantanai Sauminaya or calm man was sitting over there, Professor Ramachandran, sir. He told, there are certain norms, not norms, I don't remember that word exactly what he used. There are certain kind of, you know, things on board uh, you need to go through for one week. After that, it's a family, we are all together. But just one week, the seniors, you know, they have, uh, you know, uh, so you need to just uh, be cooperating with your seniors. And uh, yeah, that's it. So he was like very measured. Um, he didn't ask me any questions. Why did you walk through the corridor and anything? So, but I, I kind of an unconditional support for the students and a kind of freedom the students enjoy on the campus and we are not getting judged or anything. But that support from the top, that really moved me. And uh, that's what I enjoyed most as a student. The students were sovereign. So in during that time, you know, when sir responded to the senior's complaints and when he saw me, the kind of, uh, you know, the advice, the piece of advice he has given me. So that's a way, you know, that was my first encounter with uh, Professor Ramchandran Nair, sir. Then he came to the class uh, without any PPT, uh, without writing on the whiteboard. He just sat there and he delivered lectures and we used to write notes. So that's the way he used to prepare his uh, lecture every day. And he come, uh, he, he used to come with, uh, you know, those notes in his hand. And I still remember his handwriting. And he sit, he used to sit there and he used to lecture and we used to write notes. So that's the way he delivered the lecture. And the basic references he will provide at the end of the uh, course or end of the lecture. So that's the way it happened and enjoyed his lectures. Now, when we started doing our thesis, when we started doing our research, uh, you know, I came to know that his thesis was on industrial relations. And that time, a narrative which was floating in Kerala about the industrial relations was about the militant labor trade unionism. So during the time, uh, you know, the determinant of the mandates lost and the kind of acrimonious industrial relations that's happening because of the militant trade unionism. So that was a narrative that was floating. But in his thesis, through a very rigorous qualitative and quantitative methodology, he uh, broke that myth that it is not that the militant trade unionism which is leading to the acrimonious industrial relations, but there's a kind of stress between the management and the labor and the management side, you know, how many lockdowns happened and what were the issues related to the management. So there was a different perspective that was coming up from his thesis. We, that, that, that thesis was later published into a book and we read that book and got inspired and I thought that I will take a similar topic on labor economics, on the industrial economics and I will work directly with Professor Ramachandran sir for my thesis. And my seniors also worked on the industrial relations as the part of their, uh, you know, the research as a part of this analytical economics. And uh, in my class, Manju and myself, we have taken the industrial relations topic and uh, she worked with um, uh, one firm and I worked with a national textile corporation unit in Trivandrum. So the questions, you know, it, it was very tough for me that the, it was the first time we are doing the research and we need to understand the basic hypothesis, the methodology and how to write it up. 
and I went to the field, I went to the unit and asked about the industrial relations and talked to the management, talked to the labor union leaders and I came to understand that the unit which I visited to study the industrial relations of a sick unit turned out to be a, you know, a healthy unit. It's not a sick unit. That was the perception. It was a perception that the unit is sick. So this was my inference from the field and I got excited and I came back and it the shared with Professor Ramchandran Nayasar. Then he told that you need to empirically establish the fact that the unit is sick. Now you have only the qualitative data based on the key informant interviews that the unit is not sick, but you need to get into the data. You need to look into the profitability productivity and other parameters, the turnover and other parameters of the unit to understand this. So you need to work or you need to do an ROL, uh, like a you know, review of literature and to understand how you will be able to, you know, uh, you know, do a determinants analysis of, uh, you know, the industrial relations and about the, you, whether the unit is healthy or not. So these were the tough questions. Then again, I went back to the field and I asked for certain time use, uh, time series data. Then I collected some time series data and, uh, you know, I asked for a time series data to run certain regressions. That time, we just started our course in econometrics and we learned that blue, uh, you know, all those assumptions and it was like basically running a model to feel it. That's all. It's, it's a kind of an exercise in methodology, nothing more to establish that. But when I asked my desire uh, that I need to do a model, an econometric model, so told that in Trivandrum City, you can do this econometric package and modeling only in one place. And that's in Senate Hall campus, where the Department of Futurology is there. Professor Nandakumar is the head of the department. You need to go there, discuss your econometric uh, problem. You need to uh, seek his help in specifying your model and running your models in that specific computers over there. And we have only five computers in the Futurology department, which has this econometric package that time. So he gave me the reference and I went to Professor Nandakumar and I was a very shy student and Nandakumar sir asked me what is your model. So based on the ROA literature review, I mentioned that my mandate's lost is a function of many variables including the managerial variables, degree of trade unionism and so many other variables adjusting for the stochasticity. So he mentioned that you need to go to the unit and collect a bit of time series data on these variables to run a meaningful regression. And I went back and collected those data. So on one side, you know, I have I had a big uh, uh, doula that uh, Jula Sanji and all. So I have a lot of notes uh, and a note, lot of data, all these things in the fragmented form in my back. Uh, then I went and updated my data, the series, uh, which I collected for some more years and went back to uh, you know, the futurology department to run the regressions. And I was praying in my mind that my degree of trade unionism variable should be insignificant in determining this mandate's lost because the kind of narrative I was supposed to, you know, project, you know, I was thinking that it is not the degree of trade unionism. So these were the kind of a priori hypothesis which I uh, try to, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, maneuver uh, by reading the existing literature on industrial relations in Kerala, including uh, Professor, uh, you know, Ramchandran Sir's work. So, uh, you know, I, I don't remember the coefficients and its significance right now, but the regressions, of course, it is data driven. I cannot dream anything a priori like that. Of course, I can do an a priori, but it's data driven. It's an empirical research. So, uh, you know, you will get the results. And I came back with my model, the coefficients. They gave me a printout and a write up back to uh, Professor Ramchandran sir and told that this is a way the quantitative methodology I have used in my you know, research. Um, you know, as a student, I was that time 21 years. As a, as a MS student, my first research, I was very excited about this and I came back. Then he told me uh, that I need to check with Professor 
uh, Nand Kumar about uh, you know how meaningful these quantitative results are and uh, what's it about and whether we can include this in your thesis as a chapter. Then Professor Nand Kumar so told that uh, she has done it. Uh, she has a story to tell and it can be included in uh, you know her thesis and later on we can even think of uh, publishing it. It's a good piece. So I became very confident. I feel so happy because I was very tense, you know, running around, like going to the unit to understand whether the unit is sick or not. Uh, because I went there to study the industrial relations. Then I got into the, you know, whether the industry's uh, unit is sick or not. That was an inference coming up from the field. Then uh, professor asked me, what is the implication of that? Then I mentioned that profitability, productivity, certain indicators if you look into, uh, you know, I don't remember, there is a series of uh, industry related variables you need to look into to understand if a unit is sick or not. So they shared those data and uh, then uh, I uh, mentioned these aspects to Sir and he asked a question which was not there when I started doing my thesis. That is, now what? A unit is healthy, it is perceived sick, so how it is impacting the unit? Then I answered him that now it's affecting the financial variables because they are not getting the enough finance uh, to run the unit because as it is declared a sick unit, which is otherwise not sick as the mother national NTC, that uh, National Textile Corporation, that entity is sick one healthy unit within that entity is also declared sick but it is not sick but as it is declared sick uh, you know they it is affecting their finances uh, and uh, it is affecting the you know profitability so it is slowly getting into sickness uh, because you know it was perceived sick or declared sick so this was much before uh, you know, uh, this uh, um, bankruptcy and insolvency code because the prior form of this IBC was, you know, BIFR, the Board of Industrial, uh, you know, Finance and Restructuring. Uh, so it was like it was referred to BIFR. A unit is referred to BIFR, you know, when... Uh, so those things, it, it was kind of a... That, that dialogues about my thesis uh, when I was doing my MA in analytical economics. Which, so that was my first exposure to uh, you know the research then he asked me how you're going to structure your thesis your analysis is done you have gone for the data collection you have done the qualitative key informants interviews you have done your ROA literature review now you have got your own model uh, you have got your own literature uh, you have got your own inferences drawn from that now you need to sit and write your thesis how are you going to do that uh, then it was a tough time. I told him what are the works I have done, that I have done a kind of uh, readings about the industrial relations globally, industrial relations within India and within Kerala, including sales work. Then I have gone into the uh, new industrial policies in India and its components. Uh, you know, uh, then I got into uh, the industrial relations literature so these are all bits and pieces in inside my bag you know jula uh, different notebooks and you know handwritten that time i didn't have a computer because uh, after completing this the uh, this chapters and all we need to go to a place where these will be typed into a computer and they will give the print out to us and then we correct it and again we will go to the person in the computer you know there were tantum or you know there were different units around in statue and all where we go to uh, go for the help because we didn't have computers that time so we need to go to a computer center with handwritten scripts or handwritten you know thesis so that they will type then we will go through that will correct the mistakes then at last you know we need to create the bibliography like reading into it my mom also helped in creating my bibliography so that's the way the research happened that time with limited computers limited econometric packages you know the computers were the econometric packages did you did those were just five in trivandrum so that's the way it happened then uh, he asked me how do you want to write the thesis then when i explained it he wrote five chapters two core chapters one is about the determinants of the mandates lost the other is about that uh, inference i have taken from the 
feel that the unit is not sick. So how to establish that fact by looking into the firm specific variables. So those two forms my, formed my key or the core chapters. Then he told that before going into the depth, you need to do a growth rate analysis and all. Like you, you need to feel the data before getting into these deep analysis. So that interpreting data has to be a chapter to feel the data. Then I asked my senior, uh, you know, uh, who was doing his MPhil there, uh, you know, his help uh, to do this, how to do a data analysis using the statistical tools, like a feel of data. So I got the help, you know, he, he helped me in doing that feel of data chapter. Then before those three chapters, you know, we have a huge literature review part and we need to come up with a conclusion that what we have inferred from those literature and what are the gaps and how I wanted to take my thesis forward. So as a child, as a student, you know, 21, 22 years of these were like my experiences working with Ramchandran sir and after doing that, my uh, chapterizations were not very clean. So he need, he asked me to do a cleansing process like the it has to be a neat work. Then he himself like, you know, uh, restructured my chapter chapters like then he took an A4 size paper folded it into half then on one side he wrote one introduction 1.1 posing the problem or the scope or the motivation something like that 1.2 data and methodology uh, before that you know uh, objectives I, I don't remember exactly but the way he was you know uh, you know asking me to put forward that first chapter uh, then coming to the next question that the literature I have read about the global, uh, you know, the industrial relations, everything, that lit review of literature, how to align that. Then comes my interpreting the data uh, that work with growth rates and other statistical tools. Then coming to the core chapter, which I ran a sim simple regression of the mandates lost, the determinants and the story, like what are the variables I used, what are the, uh, what, what, do you, what do you call the stylized facts? Uh, then small graphs uh, to do that then coming to the you know the chapter where i'm talking about my inference about the unit as it is referred to the bifr what are the kinds of impact uh, that's happening and perceiving the unit as sick which is inducing the unit to sickness so those inferences and then a conclusion and uh, you know then bibliography which my mom helped to arrange the papers which i read and in bracket author year in bracket uh, so we need to do that throughout the thesis so this was an eye-opening you know now i can see a postgraduate student sitting in front of me so this was the way i learned to write my thesis after that i used this thesis into a small form of a proposal because while doing this thesis i knew what were the things which i can do later so that became my proposal when i applied for my high studies in cds so that's a way you know uh, Professor Ramachandran sir molded me to do research and molded me to establish connections and networking uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, I met him last uh, when I was doing my MPhil in CDS I went to his home uh, near the St. Joseph Press in uh, near the Nefertiti Beauty Parlor and Owen V. Gorup's house you know in that lane I went I met his daughter Sindhu and uh, of course, I knew uh, his son-in-law, uh, Narayan. He's a very famous uh, TV anchor. Then there, his grandchild. I met him there and that was my uh, last visit. So, uh, in, uh, you know, to conclude, I remember him as my mentor, as a professor who was intelligent and kind because there is nothing about kindness. And that's a legacy I hold within me. And now I turn to Professor Ram and I would love to listen to his lecture. Thank you so much once again.